Hello guys, it's Richard FLD and this is another video. Um, as you may have guessed from the title, this video is about how to install a car ramp. Um, I don't think I really need to go into any sort of detail of installing the speakers. I mean, I'll leave that up to you, you, know, you figure out. Because if you're competent enough to wire up an amp in your car, then you know you can sort out the speakers for yourself. Um, right, well plan is um, my car it's got all right stereo it's got a decent head unit but the existing speakers are pretty crap basically so I've got a couple of really good 6 by 9s knocking about so I'm going to whack them in the parcel shelf and this amp um, it's only a cheapy crappy entry level amp but it'll be perfectly good enough for the 6 by 9s I've got um, I'm not looking for ridiculous amounts of noise or power or anything I just want you know just a modest little upgrade so that's what this is going to be. This is four channel amp, um, so it's perfectly suited for my uh, two pairs of six by nines. Um, if you're looking to power subs, um, this kind of amp is probably not the one for you. Um, you want to be looking for mono amps. Um, I mean, it, this has got um, four channels, and you can use, you know, those four channels for speakers so for instance you could hook this up to your existing speakers in your doors or like I say what I'm going to do a parcel shelf, six of speakers and that or you can have two pairs of six by nines a bridge channel three and four and have that as a sub channel entirely up to you but um yeah this sort of amp is really sort of you know um for if you like want speakers and or an amp um um sorry and a sub so, yeah, anyway, there's a lot of choice on the market, so you just have to do your research on that, but this one do the job for me. I've also got a wiring kit. Um, you want to always try and match your wiring kits up. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's slightly less, because unless you're a complete lunatic, you're probably not going to be maxing your amp out anyway. So I've got a 600 watt kit here, a 600 watt amp, so that'll do nicely. I mean, you could always... You know, for what I'm going to do, you could probably have a 400, 500 watt installation kit, you know, that'd be perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, other things you will probably need. Um, I've got my drill out. Uh, got my drill there. Um, probably might need that to drill through the bulkhead. Uh, not bulkhead, sorry, it's really, really hot today and I've been at work and my brain is frazzled. Uh, but um, anyway, yeah. Um, to make a hole for the um, power cable, and obviously I've got my socket set, socket set for obviously just in case. Um, also, I need to take off the battery terminals and stuff. So I need that. Also, a sort of screwdrivers really. Um, you'll need something. To probably need something to prise some door panels off um, screwdrivers will tend to leave marks so if you've got a nice car with a nice interior don't use screwdrivers also if you've got brittle plastic screwdrivers will probably break what you need is something wide and flat also use a bit of cloth because that will help stop marking um, your interior so yeah anyway enough of that I'm going to get out there, I'm going to do some step-by-step -step videos or photos, and yeah, hopefully it uh, should go well. Definitely a um, job, for, uh, definitely need a couple of these for this job, especially on this day, it's just so hot, I cannot deal with hot weather. <laughs> so, anyway. <sighs> Let's get cracking. So, hello guys, um, <laughs> sorry about um, the uh, video I did last night, I was, ugh, I was so tired and it was so hot, I was just ready to just drop and die really, but um, yeah, I said I'd do some videos, but I just really couldn't, um, so what I did is I did some step-by-step -step photos, and what I'm going to do is narrate over them, <coughs> which I find easy to do anyway, and it was getting a bit dark last night, so instead of like pissing about in the dark, this is a much better way. Um, so, to get started, um, what I will do, or what I always do, 
when looking at installing an amp is I will look under the bonnet because what you want to do is you want to start preferably uh, by putting the live cable through um, so here we are my car um, I'm doing this um, in case you're wondering on a 2003 Toyota Corolla um, yeah bog standard really so what you want to be doing is you want to look down um, in the bulkhead uh, to see if there's any existing grommets or just places you can poke a wire through. Um, <coughs> here we can see this is the first port call I made. I saw these, but the problem was they were too high up. I would have had to sort of take in some of the dash off to be able to reach up there, so that wasn't really a very quick option. Um, so I still kept looking around um, down by the driver's side, not really much there. Um, so I decided um, another way you can do it is to come into the footwell and what you want to do is you want to take off the trim um, there's that one I've got my hand on which runs across the door frame and as you can see there there's another piece of trim that I took off up in the top left um, this will then give you the ability to pull the carpet back a bit um, you may have some carpet retaining screws which will be They'll, you'll spot them. Um, sometimes they screw out, sometimes you just need to give them a gentle pry and they'll just pop out. Um, you really should. Um, pl plastic trim is... it can be a pain in the ass. Um, if you've got a cheap car, chances are clips will break and yeah, the trim won't fit back properly, but you can get around that by using some kind of sort of no more nails type um, adhesive. Um, chances are, you know, once you put your kit in, you're probably not going to be taking it out again for a while, so, you know, just a tiny little blob of no more nails or something like that, and it'll hold it in place. So, anyway, um, I found this little breather hose, um, which connects up into the dash and goes onto the fan controls. Um, so I pulled out the little grommet, and lo and behold, there's a nice hole there, um, and it's nice and accessible. So I decided that's where I'm going to put my cable through. Uh, problem was though, um, the angle on which the bit of metal the hole is in is sloped down and it was too far to... it's a, such an obtuse angle I couldn't really get my hand down there to get the uh, wire through. So <laughs> luckily I had a um, bullet key ring knocking about in the car which I attached some fishing line to. Um, I tied one end um, into the car and I just poked the um, poked it through the hole and I managed to drag it out the other side. And then what I did is I just tied that onto the cable and I just pulled the cable through. Easy as pie. Um, so yeah, that's that stage. Um, in my opinion, trying to get the live cable through, it's some cars it's a pain in the ass, some cars it's easy. I mean this wasn't too bad once I actually found it, um, but it just requires a bit of searching, otherwise you're just going to have to drill a hole. Be very, <laughs> very careful and make sure you know what you're drilling into. Don't just drill through a hole, because you could find out you've got the wiring loom on the other side, or you're drilling into a you know, coolant pipe, or <laughs> the heater matrix. <laughs> There's a whole world of possibilities that could end up in disaster, so um, just you know, ultimately, if you really don't know what you're doing, take it somewhere, because you could be saving yourself a lot of grief. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I just sealed that um, hole up. Um, what I use is some kitchen and bathroom sealant. It sounds a bit weird, but, you know, it's weather resistant, it'll keep the water out, and it's not exactly like, you know, you're going to get people rooting under there to have a look, so it does the job, and it's out of sight. Next job, oh I forgot to say, when you are routing through your power cable, what you want to do is always route the power cable down the side of the car which all the other live uh, electrical cables are running. Because what you want to do is you want to put the phono cables on the side of the car which has the least electrical interference. I mean, your cable should be shielded anyway, but you know, in some cases it can actually make a difference, um, cut out some like some electromagnetic interference noises and stuff. So it's just good practice. Um but here you can see 
I've started to get the cable routed through, um, I've sealed up the hole where it comes through and I've just routed it into the cable clips um, in which the wiring loom is sitting in, which is quite handy because they actually left a bit of space there so you could clip it in. Um, I basically followed it through past the centre pillar and it's again the same through the door sill um, on the rear door it's just the same as the front you know you just lift up the uh, piece of trim and just put it through and there we are it's into the boot so yeah that's that stage of it done um, at this stage do not connect the wire under the bonnet um, that is always the last thing I do it is it's just you know more of a precaution than anything so the next stop is to have a look at the radio um, on this car, I did have the original factory um, radio in there, but other, a while back I installed this nice Pioneer head unit. Um, so, um, if you've got an aftermarket stereo, you'll need the keys to be able to get it out. Um, as you can see here, if you take off the trim around the edge of the stereo, um, you've got those two holes on each side. Um, they vary depending on manufacturer, um, but the principle is still the same, you usually have something that goes down the side to push in the tabs of the cage that's holding it in and then you can just pull it out as you can see here you've got the key sitting in there ready for the unit to be pulled out and there we go um, what I'm doing here is I'm just having a look for the remote um, cable um, this is important because what you want to do is you want to hook the amp remote up to the head unit remote because what that'll do is when you turn the head unit on it will turn the amp on and that will save you drawing loads of power when you're not using the head unit so yeah always connect that up it's just handy um there you go there's the phono outputs from the head unit that's what you want to be looking for on this i've only got one set on some you can have two um doesn't really matter um but well, one thing I did find was the crimp connectors that I got given in the set are the wiring set are completely shit. So this is one of my own. Um, of course, if you go back and have a look at the system remote control, it's a female spade connector, and they didn't actually give any in the wiring kit. Um, so yeah, this is one of my own. Um, you can buy crimp connectors as cheap as chips off eBay, or if you've got a electrical retailer like um, Maplins or somewhere like that, they'll have crimp connectors, or even like B&Q, anything like that. Um, if you've never used crimp connectors before, um, what you want to do is you want to strip the wire. You can either do this with a Stanley knife, or if you've got wire strippers, use them. It doesn't really matter, you can do just as good a job with both. Um, strip the wire, you want to twist the wire, and you know, you just fold it over um, so it's nice and neat, ready to be pushed into the crimp connector. And there we go. Um, if you, you really should have a pair of crimping pliers. I mean, the pair I have here aren't right, exactly great, um, but they do the job. The ratchet um, crimp uh, pliers are the best, and um, they're the ones you want to get. But anyway, there's the finished result, and that's ready to be connected up. Um, so, yep, that's that little job done. Um, what I've done here is I've taken the whole centre console out. Um, it's a bit dramatic, <laughs> but it was only three screws. Um, so, if you want to have a look online, because there will be guides, or there should be guides, that people have written on owners' forums, which will tell you how to take trim off if you're not sure. Always have a look on the internet if you're not sure how to do something, because there's bound to be a guide. And it's better than sort of trying to force things off and breaking them. So that's my advice is always, always check before trying to pull stuff off, especially a centre console, because if you break it, it might not go back on in a hurry. So yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for routes where I can put the uh, phone cable, the remote cable down. Um, so I eventually found one. I wired up the phone cables uh, to the back of the head unit. As you can see, I've got the head unit back in. At this stage, I turned the head unit on because I just wanted to make sure, I put the head unit in, I just wanted to make sure that it was still working. Um, if it stopped working, obviously I need to pull it out again and just have a check. So, 
while I'm here I checked it it saves any hassle later and you can see down bottom right um, you can see the cable just sitting there um, and I just pushed them down through a little space out the back into the driver's footwell and same process as in the passenger footwell um, take off the trim and pull the carpet back and there we go there's the uh, cable routed through the uh, door channel there um, door frame channel so yeah nice easy job and I put those cables into the boot and the next job I did was I mounted the amp because the next stage is connecting the amp up um, there's, it depends what you want to do really I mean some people just have the amp sitting loose in the boot personally I find that a bit lazy and <coughs> I use my boot quite a lot so I want everything nice and tidy and I don't know I just think that a good setup you know you might as well make it nice and tidy because it looks good as well so what I did here um, luckily I've got metal backs on the back of my seats so I just drilled four holes and just screwed it in if you've only got well if you haven't got a metal back then I don't know what to, to suggest really I had a car once which didn't have a metal back it had some sort of hard foam so what I did is I got a bit of black wood and what I did is I mounted the amp to the wood and then I glued um, the piece of wood with the amp on onto the back of the seat and that seemed to work it never fell off um, so yeah just always try to sort of think outside the box a bit I mean if you can't screw it then you know just yeah, have a think there's always a way you can do it <coughs> uh, next job was uh, connecting up the earth luckily I had some clamp tie down sort of hoop thingies which connected to the chassis so what I did is I put on a connector onto the earth cable and I screwed it down onto the uh, bolt as you can see there and there you go and um, you can see now everything starts to get connected I've got the live on, I've got the earth on I've got the remote wire on and I've got the phono cables in they're all routed down nicely behind that piece of polystyrene um, which I tried pulling that up I don't know actually what's under there but pfft, yeah I couldn't seem to get it up so oh well <laughs> and here you go that's the uh, finished result all the cables routed um, up the uh, middle of the uh, uh, chairs there back seats so it looks quite tidy um, so yeah <coughs> I know I said I wouldn't go on much um, on how to sp fit the speakers, but um, I just thought I'd show you sort of the finished result and how sort of tidy it looks by putting in a bit of effort and just tidying the cables away and mounting the amp in a accessible place. And uh, yeah, I think that looks quite good personally. Um, what I did, sorry, mm, sorry, I'm a bit bugged up today. And what I did to tidy the cables away is I used, uh, you can buy, they're called cable tie bases. And you can get adhesive ones, you can get Velcro ones. I can only find the adhesive ones, but the problem is they didn't stick to the carpet. So what I did is I peeled off the adhesive backing, so it was just the plastic exposed. And I super glued them up onto the bottom of my parcel shelf. And they worked perfectly fine. They are not coming off and yeah you just cable tie the uh, cables up to however you want to do it and yeah they keep them nice and tidy and stop your cables hanging down and as you can see there it just it just looks it just looks decent um, and I also installed some um, spade connectors so I can take the parcel shelf out and it only takes a few seconds just to push them back in again so yeah it's a nice little job and I'm quite happy with that and <laughs> you would be amazed I mean you get some people say oh you know six spinners are crap well if you buy a crap six to nine six spinners they will be crap but these six spinners are ridiculous um, <laughs> the amount of base you can actually get off a good pair of six spinners is tremendous and this setup is very very good um, I've actually got another identical pair of six spinners which I'm going to put in um, <laughs> So I'm going to put those on channels 3 and 4 and yeah, I might do a little update and show you how 
actually loud it does go compared to the standard speakers but yeah I'll do that another day so yeah that's the end of the tutorial um, if you want any help or any advice um, with installing car audio systems give us a shout I've done quite a few cars um, as you can see here you know I s sort of <laughs> know what I'm doing <laughs> sometimes um, but yeah just give us a shout comment rate subscribe um, that's all for now um, hope you uh, get on alright okay bye